Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that happened in the beauty space this past week, including what's happening with brands. And it has not slowed down. Last week, we had a big explosion of things happening with Morphe and their parent company, Forma Brands, and Jaclyn Cosmetics, and all of that. This week, we are going to talk about some updates to that story, but we also have big news coming out of Makeup Revolution. Back a while ago, they were under a probe of things happening in their finances, and now some of that has been released to the public, and I am going to share it with you. And it is bad, my friend. It is very bad. We'll also talk about some drama happening with the Hip Dot and Evanescence collab. Fans were not happy about some of the things that happened during that launch, so we will get into that. And then in the product report, it is Valentine's Day season, and it is also the time of year where we get a ton of huge drugstore-priced drops. So we're going to get into all of those collections. So much to share with you. Hang tight. We are just jumping into it right now. Like I mentioned in the intro, last week the big story was Morphe and Forma Brands and Jaclyn Cosmetics and all of the children underneath the Forma parent company all filing for bankruptcy and all of the details behind that. If you're curious, those videos, the live stream where I go deep into it and the more shallow version, <laughs> the summary in What's Up in Makeup last week, all linked down below. But this week we do have some updates. There haven't been any additional hearings, but there have been new things filed through the court system. It is important to note that the next major court date is February 8th, so put a little dot on your calendar for that one. I will cover everything, of course, that happens during that court hearing here on What's Up in Makeup, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. According to those recently released dockets that were added to the court documents as a whole, they kind of talked about what was going to happen on the 8th, and this is what's going to happen. They're going to discuss the fact that they still have debts and how they're going to pay that and if they're going to pay the debts and how that is all going to play out. They're also going to set the approval of sale timeline if they are going to be sold to those two investor companies. The more of things that are coming out in the court documents, it really looks like that sale is going to happen. This is the sale of all of the debtor Forma Brands assets. So that would include Jaclyn Cosmetics, Playa Hair Care, not Playa Hair Care, but Playa Hair Care, and Morphe and Morphe 2. All of that is all looks like going to be sold on that date. It also looks like they're going to talk about contracts tracks on that date. So the leases that they had at different malls and how that is going to get paid or not get paid, any related relief that they're getting in order to pay for contracts. So this might be where we learn whether Jeffree Star, Jaclyn Hill, and James Charles are getting any money before Forma Brands, uh, everything kind of gets flushed through the bankruptcy. Any objections to anything that's going to be talked about on the 8th has to be filed before February first, but I listened to that whole audio file that was included in the dockets and it didn't sound like anybody had any problems or anything, so I doubt anything's going to happen before February 1st. But there is another piece of this Morphe story that happened on January 16th. Do you remember the class action lawsuit that was filed against Morphe for their inherently dangerous pigments? And I put that in very strong air quotes. Do you remember that lawsuit? Well, now that lawsuit has been been put on hold and administratively closed due to the bankruptcy filing. There's just no money for anybody in that class action lawsuit to get from them. As far as the let's call them children companies of Forma. This is what's happening right now. Bad Habits website is currently there, but everything seems to be on sale, which is kind of weird. They've also been pulled from Ulta's website completely. As far as Lipstick Queen, they don't have any sales on their website. I don't know if they did before. It's been a long time since I've been on the Lipstick Queen website, but just so you know, you cannot buy product on the Lipstick Queen website, but they do have 
have a list of places where you can buy their products. Jaclyn Cosmetics seems to be business as usual. They just had a launch recently, and honestly, biases aside, it seems like Jaclyn Cosmetics is one of the stronger children when it comes to Forma brands. So we will see how this goes. I will, of course, 100% update you when I hear anything new. So Morphe is not the only brand going through it right now. The other major brand that we're gonna talk about today is Makeup Revolution, Revolution Beauty, all of the different branches of Makeup Revolution. There are like a bazillion of them. There's XX Revolution and Makeup Obsession and there was like a discount, um, so many different. They've, they've come out with all these different little brands uh, that are kind of offshoots. If you are not caught up on the history of what's been happening with them, here is a quick summary. So back in August of 2022, they realized something was going on with the books over there. There were some accounting issues undisclosed <laughs> that triggered an audit of the books. Because of the something fishy going on, on September 1st, the company failed to publish their audited results for the financial year that ended in February. Now remember February, because that's going to be really important in just a second. Adam Minto is the founder and CEO CEO of Revolution Beauty. Then there's this guy named Tom Allsworth, who was also really high up in the company. Adam's the CEO, Tom is the chairman. After all of this probe stuff started, they both stepped down from those positions, but they still had seats on the board. But then in November, Adam Minto, like, was gone completely. He no longer works for the company that he founded. The last update I had for you was in December when a company called Boohoo, they are a UK fast fashion website, they bought a huge stake of Revolution. Now they are the largest shareholder. But what came out this past week, side note, about Boohoo is they're not doing very well either. Apparently they reported an 11% drop in total revenue for the last quarter of 2022, which is really a horrible quarter to have a bad quarter because that includes the holiday season when everybody's shopping. That's supposed to be when everybody does really well. They did really badly, so this is not good either. So back to Revolution. Now, we did get some information that has been revealed about this probe that was happening. Several concerning red flags is the quote from the statement. This included, quote, overdue payments, inconsistencies over certain sales, and undisclosed personal loans made by Adam Minto and Tom Allsworth. The probe raised concerns over, quote, material, materially larger than normal orders. I want to let you know the articles where I got all this information are always listed in the description box. So if you want to read the articles for yourself, please do. The, all the links are down there. So what happened was is in February, remember I said you need to remember February because that's when the books, you know, was... Mm, it turns out that Revolution bought millions of dollars of their own product from their distributors. But in the purchasing from these three largest distributors, they never paid for them. They just ordered these millions of dollars worth of product, but never actually paid for them. What made it stand out to them especially is that the sales to one of the distributors accounted for around 56% of their 2022 orders as a whole. So at the end of February, they're like, oh, shit, we didn't sell a lot and we need our stock to stay up. So let's just buy 56% of the entire year's worth of product right now to make it look like we're doing all right and then just never pay for it. So as a result of this finding, the brand has been brought down their total sales by about 9 million pounds. On top of this, there are also some fishy loans happening. So 1 million pounds of undisclosed loans to one of Revolution's distributors, as well as a loan to a senior employee, and a 3,000 pound personal loan to the owners of another one of the distributors. And these loans are currently under investigation. And then there's more. <laughs> there's a company called MedChem. So MedChem is a pharmaceutical company. Why the heck is Revolution Beauty getting involved with a pharmaceutical company? Well, it turns out that our friend Tom owned MedChem. And they were like, well, Revolution Beauty can buy MedChem for a total of $26 million. 
sorry, 26 million pounds. I'm used to speaking in dollars, but this is a British company, British pounds. But the probe found that they only paid out to MedChem about 7 billion pounds. Revolution Beauty agreed it would pay the remaining sum yearly over the next four years, but it was unable to make its first payment in October of 2022. There is an article in Financial Times, again, linked down below, that alluded that Allsworth may have overvalued his brand in the deal and is simply pocketing the money. So you may not be surprised to hear that like Adam Minto, who is now gone from the company, there are very strong rumors that Tom is going to take his leave as well. Uh, I did read somewhere that he had said he's going to leave the company, but it hasn't happened yet. So we can't say for 100%, but it looks like Tom's out as well. So that is the drama and the tea from Revolution Beauty. I would love to know your thoughts down below because when we get to the product report, you'll see that they don't seem like they're having any issues. There's serious huge drop from Revolution Beauty. We'll talk about it in the product report. Hip Dot is a brand that does really weird collabs. <laughs> Just really, really freaking weird collabs. They've done collabs with Play-Doh, uh, cup noodles, uh, My Chemical Romance, <laughs> so many, so many weird collabs. So it was not a surprise to me when this past week they released a collab with the band Korn. And if you are not familiar with Korn, Don't feel your death. So they released this CD-shaped eyeshadow palette and a three-pin set. That sold out super quickly. It was like two days. And what we didn't know at the time was that they had another collab that they were about to launch, and it was a collab with the band Evanescence. So this also had an eyeshadow palette shaped like a CD and then also a three-pin set. Now, I do not know very much about Korn or Evanescence, but thankfully, I know someone who does who brought all of this to my attention and her name is Lindsay Schoolcraft. And she is the former keyboardist of a band called Cradle of Filth. Now she is an amazing solo ethereal goth goddess, was kind enough to explain all of the things that were happening from the fan perspective. Being a huge Evanescence fan herself, she bought the palette as soon as she realized it was launched. It was an impulse purchase. She saw it and she was like, Evanescence, ah, bye. But after she bought it, there were some things that just weren't sitting right with her and with other fans that she was interacting with on social media. One of the big things is that Amy Lee, who is the lead singer, it just felt like she wasn't involved. That there's so much color imagery in Evanescence's music and it just seemed empty. Like somebody just like looked at the album and was like, oh, let's name it these shades and let's make these colors. But it, it for a fan, it just seemed kind of hollow and shallow. Lindsay said to me, quote, it feels like it completely lacked caring about the Evanescence songs, putting colors to the lyrics. To add insult to injury, the fans noticed that one of the pins that came in the pin set looked exactly like a pin that had been designed by a fan named Robin, who'd been selling this pin on Etsy since 2018. Now, admittedly, it is the Evanescence logo, but the design on it was something that Robin came up with. Robin's been talking about this on Twitter, and she was saying, you know, that she really just did this out of love for the fans and love for the music. And because of the Etsy fees being so high and because she doesn't charge a lot for it, she really didn't make any money off of the pin. It was just really disheartening that it seemed like Hip Dot just took her idea and made it, you know, f for sale for their company. Along with that, and if you're fans of anything that has been around for a long time, Evanescence fans are really excited about the 20th anniversary of Fallen, which is the album that the palette is based on. And they're concerned that this is like all they're getting for the 20th anniversary. Like they were hoping for, you know, maybe a one night show or a tour or even like a vinyl or some merch or something that they could commemorate this album that was so important in their lives. And they're like, this is all we're getting. <laughs> like an eyeshadow palette that feels kind of empty, a pin set where one of them was copied from a fan without credit. And this is it. And then the last thing that fans are really upset about is that all of the information about the Evanescence Club came out on Hip Dot's website first and gave Hip Dot's fans a shot at it first, where the hardcore Evanescence fans didn't find out about it until about half an hour later when it was posted on their social media. Once it got posted on Evanescence social media, the palette quickly sold out. And then after it sold out, they sent out an email to the Evanescence email list. So they kind of felt like we should have known about it first. <laughs> 
<laughs> because we're like your hardcore fans and people that may not even know the band that like the color story are going to be able to get their hands on it and then we can't and then this is all we're getting for the 20th anniversary and blah but there is some good news there is now something on their website that they are going to have a restock of the palette and Evanescence fans are able to sign up with their email address to be notified when the restock is happening so that's really good but I can see why they're like really upset about this and this may seem trivial to some people but when you're a hardcore fan of something this stuff can really mean a lot to you and be very upsetting because you don't want to miss out on something that's so special to you and have it just kind of be handled so haphazardly now something like this did happen with the my chemical romance launch that i remember and it was a mess and the my chemical romance fans were upset so i'm surprised that this is continuing to happen with hip dot and their music collabs I, it seems like the corn launch went off really really well corn and hip dot launched everything at the same time so everybody was able to jump on it including the corn fans at the same time so no one really knows what happened with evanescence but i'm hoping that this is a learning experience for hip dot and hopefully they will make improvements to their band launches in the future switching gears a little bit but staying in the celebrity realm i have a question for you are you tired of celebrity skincare lines if you are raise your hand And I'm raising my hand especially for people who are launching skincare lines that never seem to give a crap about skincare in the past, but are seeing all these other celebrities releasing skincare. And now they're like, oh, maybe I could do this too. <laughs> so the latest celebrity to launch a skincare line is John Legend. It hasn't technically launched yet. It launches on February 1st. It's gonna be skincare, body care, stuff like that. He is joining. Harry Styles, Jared Leto, Pharrell Williams, and Brad Pitt in launching cosmetics. It's just, it's so weird to me. John's products are a little different in a couple of ways. First, the brand's name is Loved 01, and they are specifically formulated for melanin-rich skin. The way that John explains it is that they really focus on moisture as a number one priority. He said to Cosmopolitan, quote, we understood the research around melanated skin and its propensity to lose moisture more quickly than other skin type. This is the other thing that makes Loved 01 different. They're there are six products in the line. They will debut online and at CVS, uh, followed by a rollout at Walmart in March. So the products include a face and body wash, face and body moisturizer, an exfoliating scrub, a toning mist, a face and body oil, and a shaving cream. And all of them are priced between $10 and $15. So this is in contrast to like Jared Leto's average skincare price of about $75. Brad Pitt's average skincare individual product price is $202. And one thing John said in interviews is that there are a lot of people that are just not at the price point that let's say Pharrell launched his line at, which was closer to Jared Leto's average price. I think it was just a little bit lower. So he wanted to make sure it was accessible to as many people as as possible that wanted to buy it, which I think is fantastic. The key ingredients in John's line include sea buckthorn oil, rosehip oil, shea butter, coconut oil, and jojoba oil. The brand is vegan and cruelty-free. It is formulated without parabens, sulfates, mineral oil, uh, artificial colors, and synthetic fragrance. All of those things that make it look clean. Y'all know how much I love that term, clean. <laughs> Like I mentioned, all the articles are linked below. And if you're interested in this line, I highly recommend Allure's article because they did an interview with John Legend and they did not let him get away with anything and it was fabulous. So they wanted to address the celebrity cash grab thing directly with John and they asked, have you ever struggled with your skin? This is John's response. I think it's better than Brad Pitt's response to the same question, who was like, well, no, I never really use skincare. John says, I think we all do. Sometimes it's just a few blemishes and you're just like, why? You can't stop thinking about it. I really try to take good care of my skin and I've been fortunate that it hasn't betrayed me too often. So 
in the long about way, he's like, yeah, I get a couple pimples every once in a while, but overall my skin's pretty nice naturally. But he does say he hasn't ever had Botox and he does get monthly facials at a celebrity dermatologist and that he's learned most of the things he's learned about skincare, he's learned from his wife, Chrissy Teigen. He also has an investment in the men's grooming line, Bevel, so he's learned a lot from that as well. So the interviewer over at Lure, she's digging a little further and she asked John why he wanted to start the brand. This is what he said. We've done the research and we've realized that there aren't enough products that are developed for melanin-rich skin. People with darker skin hues aren't often centered when it comes to product development and formulation of skincare. And this is what I found very interesting. So this particular line was formulated in partnership with AFRAM. They also started two other lines with celebrities that are specifically directed toward melanin-rich skin. So the first one was Naomi Osaka's Kinlo, which is like a sun care brand. And then proudly by Gabrielle, Union and Dwayne Wade, that is a baby care line. John said that future products will include uh, products for hyperpigmentation and also an SPF moisturizer. But the Allure article does not stop there because they also interviewed professionals in the field. And one of the concerns that the professionals had about this particular line is that some lines say they're for melanin-rich skin, but they're really not any different than other products that are out there. And it seemed like according to these professionals that they interviewed, that this really was wasn't any different. They also noted that Love01 does not have any independent research proving that these products are better for melanin-rich skin than other skin tones. So I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below. What do you think about celebrity brands in general? What do you think about celebrity men who don't seem to care about cosmetics at all launching skincare lines? And what do you think about this line in particular? Would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I actually had about four more stories that I could have talked about this week, but top news is already really, really long. So I just have one more story I want to share with you because I found it interesting and it is the acquisition of another beauty brand. This time it is Bliss Skincare. They have been acquired by a company called AS Beauty and you probably have never heard of them, but you've probably heard of some of the brands that they have also acquired. Those include Mally Beauty, Cover FX, Julep Beauty, and Laura Geller. And when I saw that list, it made me think, okay, these, this is where brands go to die. <laughs> You know, when I think about brands like Julep and Cover Effects and Mally Beauty, who seem to be just like sinking, like especially Julep and Mally, just like, you know, really not being able to uh, attract a lot of attention, at least in our space. But, you know, who's doing really well is Laura Geller. I'm starting to see them everywhere. Their marketing is really good. So maybe there is hope for Bliss after all. And I'm hoping there is because this does seem like a pretty good purchase for AS Beauty. They are at 30,000 different retail points of distribution through Target, Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens. Personally, I have seen them at Nordstrom Rack. But what's interesting about the Bliss products I see there is they don't seem to be on a discount. Like when you go to the makeup section, a lot of that stuff is like discounted, obviously. But the Bliss stuff seems to be full price, which I don't really understand how that works, but it's a thing. The terms of the deal were not disclosed, but WWD says that they think the brand's revenue is more than $40 million a year. So we will see what happens to Bliss. I They haven't really been on my radar for a while. So maybe like Laura Geller, they'll get it kind of moving again. I hope so. All right, my friend, it is time for the product report, which is also quite massive. Lots of drugstore stuff. We have some other really, really interesting things that aren't drugstore that are kind of mixed in. Let's start with something that I did get in PR that I'm going to show you. I don't have it on my face today, but this is the On Knook palette with Sigma Beauty. I did watch her video. That's how she said her name in the video. So that's the way that I'm going to say it. I was not familiar with her before this palette came out and I went over and I watched her launch video and I watched a couple of other of her videos. She is extremely, extremely talented. This is the palette. It looks like a this. It is $65. On said in the video that she wanted people to be able to do a variety of different kinds of looks. So she included both warm and cool toned shades. I did wear this on my eyes yesterday and it performed very, very well, just the way I would expect a Sigma palette to perform. There have been some Sigma palettes in the past where I was kind of like, these aren't really performing the way that I wish they would 
This has not been the case uh, for me so far, but again, I've only used it once. I've used like five shades out of here. So if anything changes on that, I will keep you updated and let you know. Stila, okay, you know I've been rooting for Stila. I want Stila to come back. I want Stila to do good things. They just launched a new collection, which I think is very smart because it focuses on blurring products and blurring products are really popular right now. So it is called the All About the Blur Collection. Prices range from $24 to $26 for each product. It includes a blurring and smoothing primer, instant blurring stick, lip enzyme exfoliator, plush and plump blur lip blurring serum, plumping lip glaze in clear, and stay all day liquid lipsticks in five new shades. It does look like one of the face primers is sold out on Stila's website, so it's like, yay! Go Stila, go! Go Stila, go! Pat McGrath is launching her Valentine's Day collection. It is launching on January 27th. There are three six pan eyeshadow palettes, liquid shadows in seven different shades, three shades of lipstick, two blushes, two liquid lipsticks, and an under eye powder. Now, now, the packaging is really pretty. And you know what happens every single time I say the packaging is pretty on a Pat McGrath palette? Y'all always come at me and be like, Jen, it's just repackaged shades. It's just the same thing in different packaging. Please tell me that this is not happening again. Please tell me. <laughs> that these are different shades. Do not break my heart again. Every time you break my heart. Well, Pat's technically breaking my heart. You're just telling me about it. So it's not your fault. It's Pat's fault. But what is not breaking my heart that I will show you in PR Purchase Product of the Week is the ColourPop Valentine's Day collection. The collection is called Flirty Talk and they did send it to me in PR. So I'm gonna show you some of the stuff in just a minute when we talk about what's on my face. So there is the Flirty Talk 12 Pan Palette, the Heart Compact Pressed Powder Highlighter. There are five of these babies, uh, the Heart Compact Pressed Powder Blush, there's four of these. Then there is the Glowing Lip, there's three of these. The Fourth Ray Beauty Cherry Lip Balm and Scrub Duo, and then a Cutie Mark Face Stamp. There's two different colors there, they are heart-shaped. And I meant to put one on my face today and I forgot. Full collection is $149. Individual prices range from $8 to $18 each. And of course, in true ColourPop fashion, there are bundles of different things available. This one is is so cute. I'm dying. I'm dying over this. So this is the e.l.f. 70s inspired good vibes only collection. Prices range from $5 to $10 per product. There's the Bite Shies eyeshadow palette in Psychedelic Dreams and Hey Sunshine. The eyeshadow brush set with three brushes in there. The soft velvet primer. The mushroom infused shroom lip balm. Nail stickers and a cloud nine cleansing cloud for makeup removal. Available on their website now. Walmart Walmart and coming soon to Superdrug. So freaking adorable here. Milani's Luminoso is a very famous blush shade. So they have now created a collection around that shade. You can get it on their website and also at Walmart. Prices range from $9.99 to $12.99. Luminoso, of course, is part of the collection, even though it's not new. Then we have the Luminoso eyeshadow palette, the Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper in Luminoso, Luminoso Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush Highlight, and the Luminoso False Lashes. All right, remember how I said it was drugstore week? So because it's drugstore week, <laughs> every year makeup companies release a lot of drugstore stuff this time of year. So because it's drugstore week, Sephora was really light, but there's so much stuff happening over at Ulta. So let's just pop through Sephora real quick and then we'll get into what's new at Ulta. So Tower 28, one point lip liner at plus eyeliner plus cheek pencil. That's a lot. $15, three shades. They say it is a creamy, high pigment, non-drying matte liner for lips, eyes, and cheeks to create infinite looks. Also from Tower 28, this is launching tomorrow on the Sephora app and for everyone on January 24th. We have the Juice Balm Vegan Tinted Lip Balm. It is $16. There are four shades available. They say it is a buttery smooth vegan tinted lip balm boosted with healthy ingredients and bursting with juicy color. And that's something you're going to see as a theme going through all of this is that hybrid of skincare and makeup. So that's just the first one. There's a bunch more, including the only other product I want to share with you from Sephora and it's from Cali Ray. It is the Surf Proof Hydrating Setting Spray with Niacinamide. It is $35. The bottle looks pretty big to me for a setting spray. It is about three and a half ounces, which seems really big. Setting spray people, is that big? That seems really big. They say 
say it is a long wearing light, no transfer, clean setting spray with an ultra fine mist that delivers bouncy hydration and a natural finish. Love the packaging on this. And I love just the branding of Cali Ray just in general. If you don't know, they were started by the founder of Urban Decay. So it's kind of weird that it's so different from Urban Decay, but still really, really pretty. Both at Ulta and Sephora, one product from Fenty, you know how they have like the lipstick cases or whatever, and they release them in different colors. So they've just released a red one. There's a new red lipstick and a new red case. The lipstick's $20 and the case is 12. All right, you ready to get into these Ulta drugstore launches? Whoo, it's a lot. Okay, so let's start with Revlon. And you know, I'm cheering for Revlon too. I don't want them to stay in bankruptcy. I want them to thrive and do well. I bought the foundation that came out a couple weeks ago. I'm wearing it today. I freaking love it. It's gonna be in favorites and fails near the top, if not at the top. It's freaking awesome. But now they've released some new makeup, which is great. So they have these suede ink lipsticks. They're $12.39 each, 16 shades. The words on this are a little weird though. It says, color like you own it. What does that mean? Because if I bought it, then obviously I own it. <laughs> what am I missing there? Color like you own it? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't get it. But anyway, they say color like you own it with Revlon Color Stay Suede Ink Lipstick. Eight hour wear, no transfer formula, delivers vivid matte color and a naked lip feel. So that sounds nice. Other than the weird intro, sounds nice. <laughs> then there's the Micro Easy Precision Liquid Liner, $9.99 there, two shades available. I don't understand why we're, we're releasing a dip liner in 2023. I know some people still love them. Probably I'm gonna get lots of people in comments saying, I love those kinds of liners, but I feel like a pen liner is kind of where we're at, right? Because it's got that controlled flow of the ink and all of that where the dip liners are just out of control. And I mean, there are people that can use them. I personally don't like them. I feel like we left those back in like 2017. I'm not knocking anybody that uses them. I'm just saying I don't have the skill. That's all I'm saying. And then it's just a micro brow pencil, $9.99. It's like a little brow pencil with a spoolie at the end. It only comes in four shades. What? Never mind. I forgot how disappointing the Revlon stuff was. It's very sad. Thankfully, the foundation is good, but I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm a little disappointed. But hopefully the lips do well because Revlon's really good at lipstick and foundation. So I'm still rooting for them. Huge drop from Essence. 20 products from Essence just dropped over at Ulta. Prices range from $2.99 to $12.99. We have two five pan mini palettes. We have a 12 pan palette, an 18 shade palette. There's also three different mascaras, three face primers, an eye primer, a clear brow gel, a lip and cheek tint, a lip gloss, a glossy lip balm, a lipstick, a lip liner, a big blush, a stick blush, and a makeup remover. All of that just dropped from Essence. It's a lot, but there's more because Wet n Wild just released 18 products, including their Pampered collection that was sneaked last week. It's now over at Ulta. Prices range from $5.99 to $7.29. Here it is, the Pampered collection. There's a four pan, they call it an eye and face palette. There is a lip gloss, a press blush, a multi stick, a lip scrub, a two in one makeup sponge, an illuminating face mist, and a lip mask. Then beyond the Pamper Collection, they also released, released a bunch of stuff. The Shadow Silk Liquid Eyeshadow, Breakup Proof Skinny Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. See, that's what I'm talking about. A pen liner. That's what I'm talking about. Breakup Proof Waterproof Boosting Mascara, the ultimate brow maximizing powder plus gel duo. And what they call a rose comforting lip color, which I don't think is very smart because I think people are going to automatically think it smells like rose when really it's just the rose hip oil that's in there. And it's got like raspberry and all kinds of stuff. So I don't know if it smells like rose, but it doesn't look like it does. I think that's gonna turn off people that don't like rose and people that like rose scented things are gonna be disappointed if it doesn't smell like rose. But I'm just going off the description. I don't own it, obviously. But they're not done. There's also the Mega Lock and Shine Lip Color Plus Gloss, the Seeing Green Makeup Sponge, the five in one essence primer liquid that they say smooths, conditions, refines pores, balances, and makes makeup last longer. They also have a five-in-one essence primer and finishing powder with similar claims to the last product we talked about. And then finally, the Tada Eraser Silicone-Free Waterproof Eye and Lip Makeup Remover. Five different types of products dropped from Pacifica. So let's talk about the Dreamlit Glow Creamy Under Eye Concealer, $16. And in true Pacifica fashion, there's only five shades. 
Wah, wah, wah. Hopefully they extend the undertones. It does look like a relatively nice gradient, but it's still five shades of concealer in 2023. What is happening? Don't you want more people to buy your stuff? I don't know. I never get that. But one thing that's interesting about it is it's supposed to be like a concealer and eye cream in one, which I think is really smart. There's also two new eyeshadow palettes in Cocoa Nudes and Purple Nudes. Those are 18 bucks each. Two skincare infused primers. Those are called Kind Glaze Dewy Glow Layer and Glowy Vitamin C Skin Solve. Those are $16 each and I've been waiting for a vitamin C infused primer. I think that's very smart because those are really nice paired with sunscreens because of the additional antioxidant properties in vitamin C that can help fight free radical damage. They also released an SPF dosed setting spray. It is an SPF 45. It's 18 bucks. Really curious whether you truly get that SPF 45 from that spray, but I think that's really cool. And then finally, the Wake Up Beautiful Waterless Cleansing Balm at $18 as well. Now, remember in the in top news, I was telling you how Makeup Revolution had not slowed down. <laughs> they do not look like a brand that is under significant financial audit because they have launched 21 one new products at Ulta this week. Prices range from $5 to $15. So yeah. Let's talk about it. We have three different primers, the Bright Lights Primer, Ceramide Primer, and CC Swirl Primer. There's a Ceramide Boost Fixing Spray, the Super Dewy Misting Spray, a dual-sided Correct and Transform Color Correcting Stick, three different nine-pan eyeshadow palettes called the Ultimate Desire Collection, a Liner Pow Liquid Eyeliner, and a Luster Wand Shadow Stick in six shades. This I've seen on social media. I saw Laura Lee used something like this, but this is their version of it. The brow powder stamp and stencil kit in three different shades, a blush that legit looks like a lip gloss in four shades, a dual ended blush stick in two shades, and what looks like a copy of Jones Road blush balm thing in five different shades. Then there is also a whipped lip creme in six shades, seven shades of lip liner, two different types of lip gloss, a lip oil, and a mascara. And do you agree that this does not look like a brand that is doing financially having issues? <laughs> Doing financially having issues. That was wonderful grammar, but you get what I'm saying. It's just weird. Three more brands over at Ulta before we get to PR or purchase product of the week where I'm gonna go over this ColourPop stuff. So we're gonna go with Undone Beauty. Talked about some of this in PR or purchase product of the week last week. We have the Illuminating Primer Oil, the Mega Cremes 4-in-1 Color Cream in three shades, what they're calling a Lash Pomade, which looks to be kind of like a clear wax stuff for lashes and brows. Really curious about this one also a waterproof mascara and a pen eyeliner in three different shades. Seven new products from Flower Beauty. Prices range from $11.99 to $18.49. We have the matte face primer, a glowy face primer, and a hydrating face primer. A new mascara called Dream Warrior. Plump up gloss stick in six shades. The Afterglow Luminous Serum that claims to, quote, rejuvenate the skin's appearance and lock in moisture for a visibly brighter, healthy looking complexion. And a new New concealer. It is called the Get Real Concealer. How many shades do you think it has? 12. 12 shades, which is better. Okay, it's better than the stuff we talked about earlier, but it definitely looks like it leans light. I would love to know your opinion, what you think of the shade range, just based on the little dotty things, because we don't really know till we have it in our hands. We learned that last week with the Essence uh, concealer and how three of them looked identical. But it doesn't look as bad as other things I've seen recently, but it's still not great. And finally, Physicians Formula, the Butter Glow Collection. Very smart with the Butter Glow Pressed Powder, a liquid highlighter, and a liquid bronzer. $15.49 each, two shades of the pressed powder, and one each of the highlighter and the bronzer. Probably the saddest uh, shade range of all of the things we've talked about today. One bronzer, really? One? Just one. That's all we're getting is one bronzer. Why? Why? All right, my friend, PR or purchase product of the week. We'll talk about what is on my face. I do have this whole collection and I will tell you my 14 year old Phoenix is eyeballing this collection and really wants it. So I have a feeling some of it will go to them. This is the eyeshadow palette that I have on my eyes today. I don't normally wear pink. It's probably quite jarring for some people, but I've really had a lot of fun making this eye look. Very inspired by On, uh, <laughs> watching so many of her tutorials. I tried to use some of the tips that she does in her videos. So anyway, I use a lot of these shades. 
shades uh, on my lid I use to set up the look some of the matte shades this guy right here this one and this one and then on the lid I use this guy this guy and this guy uh, in my inner corner I have this one which looks white but it actually has a pink shift to it which is really really pretty that's what's on my inner corner and then on the lower lash line I got brave and I used some of these reds on my lower lash line I anchored it with the black from the on nook palette but the rest of it is like the reds and pinks and stuff from this palette which I never put red on my lower lash line because I feel like it makes it look like my under eyes are bloody but I was just having fun sometimes you just gotta let the rules in your own mind go and just have a good time and that's what happened let me go ahead and swatch some of these for you some of the ones that are a little more complex actually I'll do a bunch because they're fun I'm going to double swatch that duochrome in just my type it's one of those super shocky feeling eyeshadows just so you can really see it let's do a few of the deeper shades let's do blush in and then we'll do you up those are both shimmers and then we'll do heart emoji which is a matte and we're going to double swatch blush in and heart emoji so here are some of the shades in the palette and of course if you do not like pinks and reds you are going to hate this palette <laughs> This palette is not going to be for you. But as far as the performance of it, it's been very good. I mean, it's traditional ColourPop. It's everything that I've wanted a ColourPop to be. It does all of the things I wanted to do. The packaging is super cute. It's got these little messages that say like, kiss me and hi and DM me. And it's just, it's just adorable. Now, but what I really love, let me show you the thing I really love is the blushes and the highlights. ColourPop is really stepping up their packaging. Like these are like soft touch beautifulness. These feel amazing. This feels like old school too faced awesomeness but this is the highlight that I'm wearing it is in the shade heart of gold let me make sure my hands or my fingers are clean before I swatch it it is a very soft highlighter to put on with a brush it is not super pigmented just be aware of that and then the blush I'm wearing is called woo me it is very very bright so I had to go in with a light hand now on my lips today I did a little bit of a mix I had this one on by itself this is the glowing lip in the shade red hot and it was just it freaked me out <laughs> I'm not used to wearing all of this pink and red and it freaked me out so I got scared and I backed out of it and I ended up using the Wayne Goss lipstick that I got in my Beautylish lucky bag thank you all so much for watching that video by the way I'm so glad that you enjoyed it I enjoyed filming it so this is in the shade pecan so I started off with this and then I dabbed on some of the glowing lip here and then on top of that, I put a little bit of the highlight. So let me show you how that comes together. So I did this, dabbed with a little bit of this, and then the highlight on top. And that's how you get my lip color for today. <laughs> So yeah, very much enjoying this collection so far. It is so adorable. Not too many notable sales this week. We'll start seeing some Valentine's sales at the beginning of February. So it's a little slow in the sales section. A pharmacy free year of the rabbit gift set is available with the purchase of $85 or more. The gift should automatically show up in checkout. It does end on Wednesday, January 25th. And then from Too Faced, they're currently having 20% off of their Born This Way foundations and concealers but that does end tonight at midnight Pacific time. And finally, my friend, our artist shout out of the week, allow me to introduce you to Colby. Oh my goodness. So his account is called Colby J Makeup and most beautiful, beautiful eye looks. And one of the things I really appreciate about Colby is he makes it a point to say that these pictures are unedited. Like you can see a natural human skin texture, which is very much appreciated. I actually don't mind the ones that are edited, but it's also nice to see what the eye look and what the whole face looks like without a filter on it. So let's go ahead and look at his first look. This one he calls with the sharpness. And of course, the curves and the angles are absolute perfection, but it's the unexpected yellow highlights that he puts in there and that warm cut crease that catch me off guard on this completely. It really is such a beautiful compliment to this look that I personally never would have thought of it. I don't think I've seen quite like this before. Second look is called Birthday Sparkles. And in this post, he reveals that he just turned, wait for it, 20 years old. Wow. <laughs> Are 
are you serious right now? It makes me feel old. But this look is just so pretty. Absolutely so pretty. The way that he blended on the outer edges of the curve and the gorgeous contrast to the sharp negative space on the other side. And they really do look like shooting stars across his face. It's so beautiful. All right, final look. This caption says, I felt so pretty here, and he absolutely 100% is. So let's get a close-up on the eye. He did post this nice and close up, and I appreciate it because, wow, again, with the curves and the contrast, and I love how he looks like he's just having so much fun with color, with, like, the swoops and the swishes and the glitter on the cheek. I just love it so much. I can just, like, feel the joy through the camera, you know? Like, there are certain people you just feel that joy, and I can just feel it coming from him. So I just followed him. If you would like to follow him as well or just check out his work, his Instagram is linked down below. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you, as always, of course, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate the time that you took out of your day to make sure I didn't miss anything this week. You are awesome. Our chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I do have my farmer's market in the morning, so I won't be here during the regular time, but we will be chatting at 5 p.m. And I think what we're going to chat about is just kind of getting your take on the stories we talked about today. So if you want to sound off on these things and hear what other people in the community think about what's happening with Morphe and Makeup Revolution and all of the things, definitely come by live chat at 5 p.m. Eastern time. But if you can't make it, that's okay. It's no problem. It's wonderful to listen to like a podcast. If you're subscribed, it's very, very easy to find. All you need to go to your, do is go to your subscription feed. Should be right there for you. If you're not subscribed, you do have to jump through a few more hoops so hit the subscribe button if you don't want to jump through those hoops the hoops are though is that you're going to go to my channel page you're going to click on my videos and you're going to click on the live stream tab that's where all my live streams are housed now you can't just click on my videos anymore you got to go to the live stream tab which is kind of a pain in the butt but it's also nice to have them all organized in one place thank you again so so much for watching if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer youtube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch including last week's episode of what's been makeup should be right down there. Uh, the one at the top, YouTube, is picking for you. But if you do need to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. I look forward to seeing you here again next week. Mad love to you. Have a great week.